Hi, this is Jessica DeMassa with WTF Health. I am here at the Bayer G4A Accelerator in New York City. Um, and I am here right now with Richard Hambury. He is the founder and CEO of Sana Health. And so you've got a cool device that uses light and pulsing of some sort, right, to help with chronic pain management and sleep. So tell me what this does exactly and how it works. Right, so it works by using pulses of light and sound to basically put someone's brain in particular brainwave states which are associated with relaxation and sleep. And it's then using a feedback mechanism to basically personalize that for each person for what they need at the moment. Okay, so if I put that on, I'll get pulses of light and I'll get sound and it will help relax me or it will help put me to sleep. Okay, and how does it know what I need? Uh, it's measuring on your forehead the difference between every single heartbeat and basically the more variance there is there, the, um, it means the more relaxed you are. Okay. And so it, the device is, is basically then using that to judge which patterns it should be feeding back to you. Okay, and so do I wear this if I were to use it for chronic pain? Like, do I wear this for 15 minutes or like, what do I do to get that so benefit? It's, 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 as, it's as needed. So if you're using it for sleep, you'd use it just before you go to sleep and then it would roll off like or fall off. Long? I mean, so basically you'd wear it as you're going to sleep and then when you're asleep, it'll fall off or roll off. Uh -huh. If you're using it for chronic pain, then you're using it during the, during the day as well. Um, like for 15 minutes, yeah. or how long is like a yeah. session? Yeah, it's 50, usually, usually about 15 minutes. The most extreme chronic pain cases, who basically are resistant to even opioids having any helpful effect, um, some of those people have been using it up for four hours a day at the beginning, and then as they've got better, um, use it a bit less. But okay. it varies depending on what you need to use it for. So how is, how is that impacting their chronic pain when, like, I mean, if this is, like, like stimulating your brain waves and slowing down your heart rate, like, how, how are the things connected? Connect the dots for me. Okay, so chronic pain is essentially neuroplasticity working against you. Okay. After two or three months of having the same pain signal coming into your brain, your brain tries to figure out how to rewire itself to get more efficient at picking up that signal. Okay. So that's what happens when you learn language or learn a new skill. But with chronic pain, it's kind of working against you. Okay. What this does is it, it returns you to the set point before that happens. Because when you go into that relaxed state, your brain then starts undoing some of the things which are not working for you. Oh my god, that's incredible. So what kind of like, out, I guess, outcomes have you seen? Are you like doing a clinical study with this or where are you guys yeah, at with so the tech? We've done a 75 person um, test and that include, included special operations command, some people from Stanford, East Bay chronic pain unit and uh, San Jose Sharks. And we saw a doubling of relaxation in a 15 minute period compared to the placebo. Um, three times decrease in pain and five times increase in recovery and sleep. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So those are some pretty significant outcomes. So yeah. are you guys in market with this or like where are you at? Okay. So yeah, talk to me. Yeah. So we've got to go through the FDA first. Um, so now we're about to do the 100 person trial, uh, which is going to be about six weeks to three months um, per person. And uh, that, at the end of that, we will uh, be going, we will have done what we need to do to go through the FDA. Okay. So I know, um, so you're in, you're in sleep and chronic page management. Is there anything else that this is applicable for? That we can look yes. out. Yeah. We, we've done. We've done. We've got anecdotal data across concussion, traumatic brain injury, and stroke, um, because basically anything that relaxation um, impacts, this this is essentially helpful for. Um, and in the long run, we want to do research on things like Alzheimer's and dementia, because if you're losing sleep um, when you're past about 55, 60, you're much more likely to get Alzheimer's and dementia. So first of all, if we can increase sleep for everybody, then we can decrease the amount of people getting Alzheimer's and dementia. But also, there's a question around, can we actually help treat it? So that's, that's the longer term aim. I just want to say, like, it's, I mean, it's really lightweight. Like, it's, I mean, I can see where it would roll off. It's very comfortable. And then what's the, like, experience, like, I guess, when it's on with the light and sound? Like, what kind of sound is it? Is it, like, ocean waves? And what's the light like? Oh, okay. so, so the sound has to be very highly coordinated with the light. Okay. It's basically using your ears and your eyes as an electronic input into the brain. So okay. this is basically digital medicine in its purest form. So you're getting exact pulses, which are translating into exact brain waves in the like brain. A tone or what is it? Yeah. So it's a it's a tone that's a happening. Flash. Yeah. Okay. Well, not a flash. It's a pulse. Ah, okay. Um, and it's a very gentle pulse that starts quite fast and then slows down and then slows down again. And basically, at each time, you're you're making sure that the brain is going into that state. Okay. 
And so you're collecting data from this, I would imagine, and how is that? What are you collecting and how are you using it? Um, so we're collecting it from the forehead again, so it's okay. not just a feedback loop, but it's also collecting it. And heart rate variability is one of the most useful biometrics you can have. If you took everyone in this building and you knew how old they were and you only allowed one other biometric to determine how long you thought they were going to live for, heart rate variability would be the right one. Basically, the more pain you're in and the less sleep you have and the more stressed you are, the shorter your life expectancy. So fixing people's levels of relaxation affects almost every area of medicine. This is so neat. So if people want to learn more about it, where, they, where can they find out more? The website or anything? Yeah, yeah. The web, so the website is www.sana.io. And that's S-A-N-A dot I-O. Perfect. I was just going to ask for the spelling of it. All right. So thank you so much for joining us. This is so cool. I love the idea behind this and the fact that you can like just control somebody's heart rate by stimulating with light and sound. That's amazing. I'm Jessica DeMassa with WTF Health. Thanks so much for joining us.